but this is how and this is why you need a reverse proxy in your life. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about proxies and reverse proxies. And especially even with reverse proxies, we'll just go a little bit into Nginx because I have worked a lot with Nginx and it is a fantastic open source free reverse proxy software available. So let's see how these work and what these exactly are. Also, if you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon in order to receive free daily updates on programming on CodeDAM. This video is a part of CodeDAM's t-shirt giveaway program for the month. If you want to take part and win an amazing CodeDAM t-shirt, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video about what you think and that's it, you are eligible. If your comment gets a heart from CodeDAM, you will win a t-shirt for absolutely free. Okay, let's say you created your own family website. Let's say this is family.com or whatever and then slash I have my name, Mehul, right? This, let's assume this page should be rendered by a Node.js app, right? Because Node.js is my favorite programming language. Let's say the second member we have M2, for example, likes Vue.js a lot, right? And this is just a static website, for example. This is a obviously a server-side rendered thing because we are using Node.js with, let's say some EJS as a system. And then slash member three, likes to have PHP, right, as their homepage. Now we want to create this system. How would you possibly create something like this? Just think about this for a minute. Now, if you have watched the CodeDAM HTTP Fundamentals course, which is a free course on CodeDAM.com, you know a few things about how domain names work. So you'd see this domain right here could ideally, at a given time, only resolve to one IP address which your browser would connect to, right? So this would be a single IP address. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just assume for now that you're hosting this on EC2 or some standard Linux virtual machine, right? Now, the problem is that whenever your browser, whenever your browser tries to connect to server, the first step in the connection part is that it locates that server with the help of this IP address which you specify and does not use this path information or anything or even port numbers if you specify in this communication, in the initial communication, right? This path and everything goes in the HTTP body when the communication is happening. So that means the option of having multiple servers is eliminated, right? At least right now. So in terms of, you know, just keeping the thing simple, if you have a simple IP EC2 instance, you pretty much cannot point it to different servers on just different path names, right? They have to point on a single IP address at a given point. Okay, so this is where the things get interesting. What we actually wanted to do is we wanted to say that, hey, my client, I want, if you're on slash Mehul, then you want to have this Node.js, which might be another server, like you were thinking. This could be another server for, let's say, M2, and this could be another server for, let's say, M3, right? But we just showed that this architecture is not possible. So what we do instead of this is that we write a special program on the server itself, which does this handling, and we put client one layer behind, right? So your server right here now determines what path you are coming in this in this specific case, right? Whether it's Mayhole, whether it's M2, whether it's M3, and the client is just connecting to a regular server, right? So this might as well be EC2. Now, now this is interesting because these can be separate EC2s, and this software which does this right here is called as a reverse proxy. It's as simple as that. Reverse proxy is just a piece of software which does this mapping in some way, which does this direction of control in some way. Now, this is not specific to just path. It could be pretty much any criteria from TCP, that is layer four. I think, I think layer four is the lowest you could go in Nginx to all the way to HTTP, which is your application layer at layer seven, right? So you can do this with Nginx, you can do this with, with HA proxy as well. These are the two proxies I have used personally. And I mean, I do recommend Nginx, but HA proxy is also good for some use cases. But yeah, I mean, for Nginx, you can pretty much do this redirection on the applications, whether it's Node.js, whether it's PHP, whether it's Vue, whatever, with the help of these path names. Or you can do them on the basis of port numbers. 
as well, right? So for example, you can have a port number 3333 for this, then 3334 and so on. Or you can also do it for subdomains. I mean, as long as a bunch of paths, a different set of URLs go to the same host, which has this Nginx proxy running, you can perform this redirection, right? Now, the point is that how does this reverse proxy system actually works? Let's look into that. So in this specific case, which we are discussing, what will happen is that your client actually hits Nginx at the very first place. And the reason it hits Nginx and not your Node.js or any other process is because Nginx as a server is listening on port 80 or port 443, which is the standard port for HTTP or HTTPS. So when that happens, now Nginx is in control, right? And the job for Nginx is not to do any processing, not to compute this and that, which your application does, but it's just simply redirecting stuff at least in the most in most of the cases. So what it will do is that you can specify, let's say you have a Node.js server here, which listens on port one, two, three, four, right? Then you have a PHP server, which is listening on one, two, three, five. Then you have a Vue.js server, which is of course static. So these are just static files, but there's a static server running with the help of Express or whatever. And this is on one, two, three, six. Right, let's say. So you see, these applications are listening on ports which are not accessible via internet, right? So these ports are not accessible via internet. That means, ideally, if they were accessible, you could just write port number one, two, three, four and bypass Nginx, but that's bad for security as well as for, I mean, for getting this infrastructure ready. So what we do, in fact, instead is that if I'm writing slash mayhole here, Nginx allows me to write a rule that, hey, if the location is in fact mayhole, I want the proxy to pass at this port number. So I'll say proxy pass localhost 1234, right? So the reason I'm writing localhost here is because I'm assuming that Node and Vue.js and PHP are running on the same host as this Nginx is running. But this, this need not to be the case, right? It could very well be in the same intranet or, you know, in the same subnet. So that way, this redirection would still work, right? You would have to specify a different DNS name or a hard-coded IP address, but this would still work. Now, why is this thing important? Well, you can think of Nginx as the ultimate middleware to your application, where you can perform all sorts of things in a very, very, very performant way because Nginx is written in C or C++, I don't know, but you can see it's not your Node.js thing, right? So C and C++ are actually very, very, very very performant languages i mean closest to assembly so you can do some real performance good damage if you're writing your softwares in c and c plus plus so nginx is performant it is feature rich that means you can do rate limiting you can do web sockets connections you can do i don't know like there are so many options to do you can do load balancing you can do a lot of stuff with nginx right so but the core fundamental of reverse proxies is the following that it just sits as a front layer in most of the cases and then distributes the traffic to different applications or sometimes maybe the same application running differently just to act as a load balancer, right? So for example, a standard use case of Node.js app would be to have an Nginx, Nginx process, and then let's say four nodes, node apps, right? And when would you do that? You would do this on a four core system. Why? Because a Node.js is a single threaded app. Therefore you have, basically you're using all the four cores of your server now with the help of Nginx load balancing, kind of, right? So you can perform the same load balancing with Nginx, HAProxy, pretty much any other uh, reverse proxy application as well. But this is how, and this is why you need a reverse proxy in your life, because now, all the authentication, all the rate limiting, all that stuff could be in a single place. And most importantly, the TLS termination as well, because this is also computationally a bit expensive. I won't say much because now, I mean, it's it's basically, you know, the standard stuff, but TLS termination is much faster in Nginx compared to Node.js. TLS termination is just converting your HTTPS traffic to HTTP. And why you need that? Because your applications need to re read plain text information coming, right? They don't need to read the garbage. But yep, that's pretty much it. I think we covered most of the stuff which needs to be known as a backend developer if you're just starting with reverse proxies. So that is all for this video. I hope you understood it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. 
that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon